Welcome to Voices from the Valley, a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. I'm Amy Spreeman. And I'm Carolyn DeRosier. You don't need the latest Census Bureau numbers to tell you that racial and ethnic diversity in the Fox Valley is changing. You can see it. You can hear it. Good morning. And you can even taste it. Oh, wow. Oh, I can change. It's not late. Yeah. Last episode, we shared that census data from 2020 showed that the number of Black, Asian, Native American, multiracial, and Hispanic people increased 57% in the Fox Valley since the prior census in 2010. And we talked with Timber Smith, the city of Appleton's diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, about what it was like as a black man to move to the Fox Cities almost three decades ago and how things have changed. We'll link up that episode in the program notes today. For this part two episode, as promised, you're going to hear from Lisette Cruz Jimenez, a diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator for Latinx middle school students for the Appleton Area School District. Lisette's is one of five DEI positions in the district, all working to help students feel a little more included in the fabric of the community. Before we hear from Lisette, let's talk about some numbers. One of the largest shifts in the census data is in the Hispanic population. In fact, Hispanics make up the largest minority group in Northeast Wisconsin. Hispanic and Latino residents of communities along the Interstate 41 corridor between Oshkosh and Green Bay increased by 46% between the 2010 and 2020 census. We're going to link up all the census numbers in our program notes today, which you can find on our website. When we spoke with Lisette last week, she shared what it was like when she moved to the Fox Cities and how hard it was to break through and feel like a part of this community when longtime residents didn't seem to want or need to increase their circles of friends. She's working to make sure that doesn't happen to the next generation. Here's our conversation with Lisette. Well, welcome, Lisette, to Voices from the Valley. Thank you so much for joining us today. Can we just start with having you share a little bit about yourself, your background, and your role with the Appleton School District? So my name is Lisette Cruz Jimenez. Uh, I've been in the area for about 16 years. And what I do for the Appleton Area School District is I am one of the newly created positions for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I am the DEI coordinator for Latinx Hispanic students in the middle schools. Um, I primarily work at Madison Middle School and Kaleida School. So there are um, five Others, um, it's five of us on the DI team that are DI coordinators. So there is my counterpart that is in elementary. She is the DI coordinator for um, Latinx Hispanic students in the elementary level. And then there's also um, my colleagues that are for Hmong students, also elementary and middle school. And then we have a colleague that is for um, Black African American students. And we have our Native American indigenous uh, population um, liaison coordinator. She is also at the high schools for our Native students. So typically I will start my day here at Kaleidoscope um, checking in with the center kids and just making sure, you know, what may be going on, um, supporting them and them and the teachers in any way that I can. The center kids, what that means is um, students that are um, new to the country and um, may not speak English or know the culture, know what schools in the U.S. look like. Um, so helping them to immerse in the culture here at Kaleidoscope. There are 15, I want to say, directly of who I work with is eight students. Between the two schools, um, my concentration is Latinx students. And so um, between the two schools, it's about 200 students on my caseload. But realistically speaking, what I am able to caseload is about 50 students at this point. Well, the focus of this episode is the changing demographics and the increased diversity in the Valley that we saw in the most recent census. 
And we wanted to get some of your professional insight working in education, um, but we also want to hear from you personally as well. What has your experience been like living as a Latina in the Fox Valley? So um, I grew up in Chicago. And so growing up in Chicago, there are things that you enjoy that you don't even think about. For instance, speaking Spanish or the color of my skin. I took that for granted, if you will. But moving up here, it was hard. I was very confronted in 2005. I was very confronted with how different I was. And so it was um, a bit of culture shock, I will admit. I was depressed for a long time because it just felt like I couldn't figure out how to fit in, you know, and sometimes you don't want to have your mind go to this thought. But I would think at that point in time, did it have to do with the fact that I was Latina? Or did it have to do with the fact that this is a small area and it it appears that a lot of people have stayed in this area? So maybe they don't need a new friend. Maybe they're comfortable with the friendships that they've had. They're, they have all of their family. So a new person isn't really necessary. And um, sometimes it didn't feel like the most welcoming place. Um, luckily, I've been able to find other transplanted people to this area and um, have become really great friends with some people that are from Chicago, but also from other areas that we've kind of gravitated towards each other and not necessarily, they're not necessarily all Latinas, just people that um, I guess we were open and seeking friendships because it was a topic of conversation that comes up that it is kind of hard to make as a newcomer to this area um, to make friendships. I guess I would encourage both sides to open ourselves up, but for the people that are, you know, from this area and have grown up in this area and this is potentially all they know to open themselves up because great, amazing friendships could come of ourselves, both sides opening ourselves up to different experiences, different voices, different cultures, different ethnicities. There's so much richness to all of that interaction. And the possibilities really are endless if we open ourselves up to that. So one of the things that I haven't seen talked about as much yet in the reporting on the census is the fast pace at which we're seeing increased diversity in young people, in child care centers, in schools. What do you see from your perspective in the Appleton School District when it comes to changes in demographics? So I would agree that um, the demographics have definitely changed. Um, You know, I can only speak of 16 years ago when I first moved here. My two kids, my two older kids are very dark hair and I could go into an assembly and literally pick them out from the crowd. And it gives me a lot of hope that now it's not the same. Um, Our BIPOC population, BIPOC means Black, Indigenous, people of color. And those numbers have risen. It's at 35% for the count that we have from this school year. And so that number is widely changing. And the hope that I have is that the representation and staff and educators continues to rise as well so that our students have more of a sense of belonging. But I love how welcoming and how accepting my students are towards just everyone. I feel like we have so much to learn from this generation in that aspect of how welcoming and how accepting they really are and how that can lead so many changes, hopefully, you know, and how that can open our hearts and our minds to differences and accept them just as they are, just as who, you know, be accepted as what you come and what you present on a daily basis. I work intentionally to create a welcoming space for everyone, that it isn't something that I have to lecture you on or that I have to convince you of. It's that it's natural, that it just happens because that's the beauty of learning from other cultures and learning from other people and learning from just differences. And I know that some of what I say sounds very idealistic and very Like, I don't see the reality of it, but I do. I do uh, see the reality and I see the pain that it causes, that racism causes. But my prayer is that if I am able to show you my humanity and I'm able to see your humanity, that that in turn helps us to see that there's more that unites us than what could divide us if we allow it to. Mm -hmm. 
I see it personally for my daughter at daycare, and now she's in 4K at Horizons in the Appleton School District. You know, we've been really lucky that almost every class she's been in since she was two months at daycare, almost half the kids have been um, biracial kids or kids of color, so that as she kind of grows up and looks around and makes friends, hasn't felt like the only one or the odd one out. But I know sometimes depending on where kids live within the district or just their circumstances, you know, there still can be that feeling like, oh, I'm I'm different. But I guess I've been personally pleased that I feel like my daughter's been able to start to grow up in an environment where she feels comfortable, welcomed, and, you know, not alone. And I think it seems like that's really where things are, are heading um, in the school district as well. Um, we're talking more and more about this concept of belonging. From what you see, what are some of the reasons that marginalized students, BIPOC students, or their family members might not feel like they belong in their school? You know, I, I can't speak for everyone. This is my experience. Um, I do think that the lack of representation in our staff and in our educators does affect students because to them, there's a lack of understanding, lack of feeling like they're seen and heard. And so I do think that causes the disconnect. I can tell you that I've had students tell me how excited they were to see a Latina come in to the building. And I can't say that, you know, I'm this magic wand or, you know, that I'm the answer to anything, but seeing someone that looks like you that can understand maybe like some of the, the hardship that you've faced, I think that helps our students feel like, okay, there's someone here that's going to get me. There's someone here that's going to root for me and that is going to be there for me unconditionally. And that's what I try to express to my students, that I'm here for them no matter what. That's part of the disconnect. And then COVID just, just threw a wrench into everything and made the disparities that we all know, but it just brought them to the surface in a greater way. Um, my hope and the work that I do is to hopefully bridge that gap. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. The Community Foundation is proactive and purposeful in its goal to connect donors with community needs. The staff learns what can help nonprofits support their missions and strengthen the region, and then rallies the entire community around issues and opportunities that we should address together, such as the special COVID-19 Community Response Fund, which was started in the early days of the pandemic. Learn how you, your family, or business can make a difference at www dot cffoxvalley.org. Thank you. So the, the makeup of the Fox Valley is changing fast. And I sometimes think about the fact that our elementary school kids today, 15 years from now, that's our future workforce, our future leaders. What advice do you have to people who are in leadership positions right now on what we should be doing to be ready to welcome a more diverse next generation, you know, into our workforce, into our community, our places of worship, all of these spaces in the community where they might be? I really do believe that acceptance and appreciation for differences is what this generation is teaching us all. I will give you an example of both Madison and Kaleidoscope. We have started um, Latinx Club. And so when I put it in the announcements for both schools, because I am big on including people, I opened it up to whoever wanted to sign up. Yes, it's Latinx Club. So that was a given, right, that it's for Latinx students. However, I won't exclude anyone. That's just something that is not in my heart. That is not how I want to lead. So I had, you know, students sign up. And the first day of club at Madison, we're all in my room. And in walks a very non-Latina student. And all of them get up and they yell her name. And they all come and they hug her. And they're all so excited. And then other kids start coming in and 
they're just all so excited to welcome their friends, welcome anyone that wants to learn about our culture. And the group continues to grow at Madison because I think because of that, because the students have grown to some curiosity about what are we doing? How can we learn more about our friends? How can we learn more about what you all are up to and giving them this safe space for that learning that hopefully translates into that future workforce that because they've had some foundations of just accepting everyone and learning, being open to learning of someone else's culture and what they bring to the table. Hopefully that will translate and transfer over into the workforce in 15, 20 years that we will feel like people that come from different backgrounds can feel accepted and valued for who they are. I love that example. And I love that vision and I'm excited for this next generation. Very excited. Lissette, you were recognized in 2021 with the Fox Cities Chamber Inclusive Excellence in Education Award. Congratulations again. What motivates you to work to make our schools more inclusive? Belonging, being included. I really do think that our basic human needs. And so because I have experienced being excluded for whatever reason, that has made me very self-aware that any space I enter into, I have the power of inclusion. And so I want to build a bigger table. I want to extend the table as much as we can possibly extend it so that people have a seat there and they have a voice there. And I hope for a world where no kids are left thinking, why can't I just be accepted for who I am? I hope to see that someday where kids can truly know that it's okay to be whoever, whatever. Um, And I hope that I've contributed positively to that. I'll be back with more of my conversation with Lisette in just a moment. I'm Reg Whiteven, a local attorney with McCarty Law and a board member for the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. The Community Foundation is about connecting the needs of the community with solutions, as evidenced by the Nelson Family Crossing, a walkway linking Kakana and Little Shoe. I've also seen Community Foundation staff connect my clients to certain causes or charities. I'd like to connect you with the Community Foundation's helpful and passionate staff. Please call 920-830-1290 or go to cffoxvalley.org. The Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region is a great resource for making a local impact while simplifying your charitable giving through a tax-deductible charitable fund. Perhaps you're passionate about certain organizations or want to support causes such as education or pets at the animal shelter, or you're interested in addressing the greatest needs of the community. When you partner with us, we'll share our local knowledge so that you can make a difference today and always. Learn more at cffoxvalley.org. And now here's the rest of my conversation with Lisette Cruz Jimenez. It's especially fun to get to interview Lisette because you've actually been a volunteer with the Community Foundation these last few years on our grants committee for our Bright Idea Fund. And I just wondered if there was anything you'd want to share about your experience of volunteering with the Community Foundation with our listeners. Yes, I would invite others to find ways to get involved in our community. But the Community Foundation has just given me such a wonderful opportunity to learn of great things that are happening throughout our community that I would otherwise have never been a part of. And when I and I, I thought of, you know, several grants that I don't know how to better express it, that I was a part of approving. And when I think of that great work, it just gives me such a, such a great positive sense of ownership, but also that I belong to this community, that my work belongs to this community, that I'm giving back to this community that at one point felt so foreign to me. But that through volunteering, through being involved in the Community Foundation, it it truly has helped to shift that mindset of, I'm a part of this. 
and I can be a, a really positive part of it. Well, thank you, Lisette, for the time and the energy that you've um, volunteered with us. And it's a privilege to get to work with you and to be a part of your story of, you know, what feels like home for you in this community. Um, is there anything else that you want our listeners to know, either about your experience in the Valley or your work in the schools? I think that we all have, we all hold some sort of power, right? We all hold the key to helping others feel included. And so when we see someone that is new to our area, be open to saying hello, be open to learning of others' culture, of others' beliefs, just help people to feel as though this can be home for them. I want our listeners to remember that all of us have that in us to be inclusive. We decide. We make a decision every day and and, and any encounter that we have, we make a decision to be inclusive or not. And I would encourage us all to seek ways of being intentional and welcoming because we our community is going to continue to change and we're welcoming refugees into our area that are going to look different, that are going to worship different, that are going to eat different than what we're used to. Take a moment to open yourself up to that because there's no, otherwise there's no way for you to know whether you could have enjoyed that friendship for years to come. There's no way for you to know that you could have enjoyed that meal with them. So just be open. But um, recently, we were asked to share our favorite quote um, by Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King. And um, I want to end it with sharing the quote that, to me, um, just speaks volumes. It is something that I keep in my heart so that it leads the work that I do on a daily basis. It says, use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use it to, for a purpose greater than myself. Carolyn, what an incredible interview with Lisette. Listeners, we've got all the links for today's program on our website, cffoxvalley.org. Look for the podcast link on our homepage and look for today's episode titled The Changing Face of the Fox Valley, Part 2. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to this podcast and get all of our episodes delivered to you on demand, sent to your computer or smart device. We'll see you next time on Voices from the Valley a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. Mm-hmm.